I'd like to welcome you. My name is Sergio Ray. I'm with the Arizona State University School of Geographical Sciences and Urban Planning. Um, Carson Farmer, who was supposed to be the chair and actually organized this session, had, could make it uh, unexpectedly, so I'm going to chair the session. Uh, we have three talks today, and I will ask the presenters to keep the remarks to about 15 minutes, so we have time for questions and discussion from the floor, and enough time for the um, preceding speaker to get up, or the following speakers to get up. Uh, our first talk is part of a larger project that I'm a co-author on, and that's a little bit awkward, but um, uh, this is a project developing methods for spatial distribution dynamics. Think about if any of you saw the comp stats discussion yesterday with kernel densities, you have some phenomena you're studying over time and over space, and you want to understand how the distribution evolves and what the role of space is in that context. The particular focus is on income inequality, which is attracting a lot of attention um, in recent time. And this paper is a joint effort by myself, Wei Kong, and Levi Wolf, with different title um, from what's in the program. We're examining the properties of statistical tests for spatial dependence and spatial heterogeneity in discrete Markov chain models of income distribution evolutions. So Wei is going to give the presentation. I ask you to uh, welcome her. Thank you. Um, so this is our title, and let's start with some background introduction. So distribution dynamics concerns the study of both external and internal dynamics of cross-sectional distributions measured over multiple discrete time periods. External dynamics refers to the changes in the overall morphological properties of distributions, such as convergence, divergence, and polarization. Internal dynamics is the mixing and the changes in the absolute and the, also the relative positions of observations measured of, um, of the distribution over time. So this great Markov chains model was proposed to study distribution dynamics over 20 years ago and has become the dominant approach ever since. This table is extracted from a paper where Kwong uh, adopted a first order time stationary Markov chains model to study regional income distribution di dynamics across US states from 19 48 to 1989. First, he used quintile cutoffs to discretize income data. Then he estimated a five by five tracing probability matrix. As can be seen from the table, states in the poor race class has, have a 92% probability of staying poor. And um, states in the richest class have a 94% probability of remaining rich. But the states in the three middle classes would have more probability of moving to other classes. This approach falls short in fully addressing spatial dimensions and the nine income distribution dynamics and assumes that regional theories are independent and identically distributed. However, space has already been recognized as playing an important role in international and regional economic growth. Spatial dependence can arise from different forms of spatial interactions, such as the trade, the technology, and knowledge spillovers. Spatial heterogeneity can be due to varied industrial structures across different spatial regimes. Let's look at closer how spatial dependence might be present in distribution dynamics. So the upper two maps showing the quintile distribution for per capita incomes in the end point years of 1929 and 2009 with the income densities to the um, top right. The latter shows very strong convergence. The bottom two maps show the quintile distribution for spatially permutated income data. Yet the income density 
the income densities are identical to the observed series. However, the observed series are highly spatially autocorrelated, as can be seen in the bottom in the bottom graph, which depicts that the global measure of spatial dependence, Moran's I, in blue line, it is statistically um, significant. While for the um, observed, while for the random series, permutative series, it is never significant. So in other words, spatial dependence, which tends to be the rule, not the exception, is not captured by the traditional methods of distribution dynamics. Several approaches have been proposed to integrate spatial effects in discrete Markov chains model. Spatial Markov was proposed by Dr. Ray to integrate spatial dependence. Rather than only one transition probability matrix, spatial Markov contains that there are several different transition probability matrices governing the distribution dynamics. In, they are conditioned on regional context, such as labors. So in spatial Markov, there is a high chance that poor economies with poor labors might have a lower chance lower probability of moving upwards compared with those with rich labors, resulting in the spatial poverty traps. Spatial heterogeneity can be introduced by estimating different transition probability matrices for different spatial regimes. Before adopting this variance of discrete Markov chains model, we need a formal test to detect spatial effects. Several test frameworks have already been uh, su suggested. In our research, we concentrate on two, the likelihood ratio test and chi square test. So uh, the null hypothesis of these tests is that there is only one transition probability such as the PIJ. Um, we can specify the alternatives by defining conditional probabil transition probability matrices accordingly. It's PIJ conditional IL. Thus, both spatial dependence and spatial heterogeneity can be tested using either of these test frameworks. Analytically sound and elegant as these tests might appear, they suffer from several serious problems when applied to empirical research. First, asymptotic properties might not hold in small sample settings. Power and size of these tests haven't been formally evaluated. Second, the power of spatial dependence test in the presence of spatial heterogeneity remain unknown. The same goes for spatial heterogeneity test. So our research is in intended to conduct a series of Monte Carlo simulation experiments in Python to address these questions. First, we vary sample sizes to, to address the small sample problem. Second, we integrate spatial effects to evaluate the size and power of these tests. In order to do so, we need to develop a data generating process which would mimic the properties of discrete Markov chains model with and without spatial effects. We draw on some literature which has used discrete Markov chains model as approximations to vector autoregressive model, VAR. So we adopt a similar approach using a stable first order VAR as our data generating process. So equation three shows that income of economy I at time T is dependent on its own income and incomes of other economies at time T minus one. VI is a raising specific constant term. Alpha I is a temporal lag coefficient. Rho i is the rating specific spatial autoregressive coefficient. W i j is the rho normalized spatial weight expressing the spatial interaction between economy i and j. Epsilon i is the 
temporally non-correlated error terms for region I. Equation four is the vector form of equation three. So by imposing restrictions on the temporal lag coefficient alpha, the spatial autoregressive coefficient rho, and also the process mean mu, we can simulate the law as well as the alternatives, which can be used to evaluate the size, power, and robustness of the tests. So in our simulation experiments, spatial dimensions of sample size range from five by five all the way to 13 by 13. Temporal dimension is a constant 100 at this moment. And first, we simulate the law without spatial effects to examine the size properties. The rho is set to zero, mu is set to one, and alpha is set to 0 0.5 for all the economies to exclude spatial dependence and spatial heterogeneity. Spatial Markov is simulated by setting rho non-zero. We also vary the values of rho to adjust the level of spatial dependence. We examine two forms of spatial heterogeneity. For mean heterogeneity, the process means vary across different spatial regimes. There might be two, three, and four spatial regimes. Let's take a look at three spatial regimes. Process means of all the economies within spatial regime one is set to 0 0.25. For the second spatial regime, set to one, the third, three. We adopt a similar approach for lack heterogeneity. We split our sample into spatial regimes equally. Here are the layouts. By, by simulating um, the data generating process of the three alternatives, we also use the other tests to examine their robustness. For example, for when, when simulating spatial Markov, we, adopt, we apply the spatial heterogeneity test to the simulated data to see whether it would pick up the spatial dependence, the wrong effect. Let's look at some results. So start with the examination of tests under a law. The figures show p-values of tests for spatial dependence and spatial heterogeneity for different sample sizes. This is the sample sizes and for different numbers of spatial regimes. Um, this is the spatial regimes, spatial regime numbers. The p-values are arranged in a descending order for 1,000 replications. So this is 1,000, 1,000. In a, in a, for 1,000 replications in a single experiment. So in, in general, the test has good size properties. The, mm, the average sizes are close to 5% level. So turning to our alternatives, let's start with the spatial dependence. Here again, the p-values are arranged in the same fashion as before, but the columns show the experiments with increasing level of spatial dependence. Spatial dependence test has good power to detect dependence. So the green, green line and the green number. But we, on the other hand, uh, main heterogeneity test is, should not pick up spatial dependence. But as the sample size and the level of spatial dependence increases, it is sensitive to dependence. So uh, spatial heterogeneity test is not robust to spatial dependence. With regards to spatial heterogeneity, the, the test has excellent power to detect this form of heterogeneity. But the spatial dependence test is not robust to this alternative. 
and is uh, even more pronounced than in the case of spatial heterogeneity tests in the presence of spatial dependence. So, uh, and when the spatial heterogeneity is reflected in the temporal lag -like coefficient alpha, the test has good power to detect this form of spatial heterogeneity. And spatial dependence test is also robust to lag -like heterogeneity. In other words, the form of heterogeneity matters. So let's, let's um, do our con conclusion. Uh, so in, by using the spatial dependence and spatial heterogeneity test in combination, we can uh, identify the lag heterogeneity, but we cannot clearly distinguish the spatial dependence from main heterogeneity because the test for one alternative is not robust to the other. Our next steps are going to develop more robust tests and incorporate that in the spatial dynamics module in PESOL. Mm, yeah. um, and if you have any questions or if you are interested in our project, you are most welcome to visit our website. And um, another thing, so spatial Markov, spatial Markov and two tests for both for spatial dependence and spatial heterogeneity have already been implemented in the spatial dynamics module in PESOL. Um, thank you for your attention. Thank you.